Right, now where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Oh yeah, I gave you a sneak preview of the brand new Land Rover Defender and I said the next time you see me with one, I'll be driving it. Well, I've got the car and I've got the key and I've got my dog. So I thought I'd use it to take my dog for a walk because that's like a outdoorsy, Land Rovery kind of thing to do. So let's get prepared. That's just an excuse to show you the boot. Look, it's got a boot. Plus, I need this. Bleep, you've put on weight. Come on, up you go. Ah. Ooh, swanky. Well, this does feel posh for a Defender. There's no getting around it. There's leather, there's what I assume is aluminium. Could be plastic. No, oh, I think it is aluminium. Very nice. I seem to remember seeing and talking to a designer fairly early in this car's development, and they said that this metal twin spar that crosses the car here and forms a dash, it is structural actually to the car, was going to be exposed metal. Then it is, if you peel away the leather and plastic covering it. But it does feel kind of rugged in here. It doesn't feel like it'll be ruined within the first week at least. From a dog's perspective, a review. Go like this if you like it. Okay. Oh, you do. <laughs> there is a long and a short wheelbase version, as there was with the old Defender. This is the long wheelbase. It's the D240, which means it has a four-cylinder turbo diesel putting out 237 brake horsepower. 0 to 60 is not much under 10 seconds. So it's not quick. I didn't expect it to be. There will be quicker versions. This is the SE trim, which is mid-level. It's got everything you'd expect to find on a car today. A standard 57,000. This one's actually 63 as is with a few extras. If you want to mess about on the configurator, as I have, I managed to get one to just south of 100 grand for a Defender. <laughs> Door mirrors this size means I can hear them because it's like pushing two kitchen doors forwards through the air. And there is wind noise. Just on the way to the dog walking spot, a slight detour. I want to show you something a bit wonderful, rather beautiful. It is the very genesis of this car. The small but still burning flame at its heart. This is a Series 1 Land Rover. My Series 1 Land Rover. I've owned it for oh, 20 years and you can see how it's flourished under my stewardship. To be fair, I am part way through restoring this myself. Just 10 years into the project. But this was where it all started. When this car arrived, it rewrote the rule book on what a car could be. It became a multi-purpose tool. Yes, it could drive off the roads, but it could work. It could pull a plough, thanks to the power takeoff. It could run farm implements. And it could get you places nothing else would get you. In fact, in some remote parts of the world, for people living there, a Land Rover like this was the first car they ever saw because it was the first car that could get to them. The Land Rovers are loaded aboard country boats to make the crossing and drift a little downstream till they come to a road on the far side. The road that will carry them on towards Darjeeling and Burma. Not all the bridges have stood the test of time on this unused road. No wonder it takes a couple of hours to travel 15 miles. And when I grew up in Solihull, near Lode Lane, where Land Rovers were made, seeing them new, rolling off to the streets for the first time, it was, to me, it was the most exciting thing possible. They were cars, but not just that, they could take you beyond. They were the most glamorous, exciting things in the world. And there it is. But that was then. This is now. When the original Land Rover was born, 1948, the average family car was as luxuriously appointed as a garden spade. So to stand out and be considered utilitarian, that Land Rover had to be like, well, driving to work on a steel girder with an engine strapped to one end. And it was. But back then, a self-winding wristwatch would draw a crowd. 
A smartphone would draw a crowd armed with pitchforks and fire. We're different now. We have watches that gently remind us when it's time to stand from our desk and move. Our fridges can automatically order a new renewable bag of kale. Gluten is a hate crime. Criticising anyone is a war crime. Our doctors can't tell us if we're getting a bit fat, even if we are fatally chunky. We must eat cleanly, exercise holistically and tread lightly on Mother Earth. So I am roughing it, really. This, for us now, is as basic and utilitarian as a drayman's cart. Right. Dog walking. Hang on, pup, let's get you ready. Oh, where's the key? Come on, come on, let's come. Okay, the hills await. Now, I'm off-roading today, not the car. Partly because I borrowed it and I forgot to ask if I could, you know, drive up a hill or something. But also, well, it's a given, yes. The new Defender can cut it on the rough stuff. It's got an automatic locking centre diff. Its terrain response system works with the throttle, gearbox and electronic stability control to turn it into whatever it needs to be to tackle whatever you're driving on, over or through. Its approach, breakover and departure angles are class leading so its very shape is working in its favour and it could find grip in a tub of Vaseline. I have heard criticism from people saying, oh, when are you ever going to see a sheep in the back of one of those? Well, to them I'd say, I'd like to meet the last farmer who spent, what, 50 grand on the last Defender station wagon to put a sheep in it. They don't drive them, they all drive pickups. Mostly made in Japan, and mostly cheaper, more reliable, better made and longer lived than anything turned out by Land Rover ever. It's not for farmers, it's for this. A brief escape into the great outdoors and then scurry back to a life that thankfully for most of us can be more comfortable and more luxurious than anything that could have been imagined at the time of the Land Rover's original launch when a tea tray with handles was considered a luxury that could make you soft. Maybe time we head back. Do you agree? You needn't think you're getting in there. You've got muddy paws. This is a £60,000 vehicle. You're a dog with muddy feet. I don't think so. Not these days. Oh, and Land Rover, one final thing. Why didn't you finish the job properly and put a discovery badge on it? Because that's what this is. This is the best discovery you've ever built. You just put the wrong name on it. Do you agree?